There are a plethora of different factors to determine if a Pokemon can be good competitively. Typing, move pool, abilities, you name it. But one of the big characteristics most people will first glance upon are the Pokemon's base stats. Base stats give a rough idea on how a Pokemon will perform, what kind of moves it should use, and its role on a team. Bulky Pokemon generally have higher HP and defense stats, while more offensive Pokemon will have higher attacking stats. Speed determines turn order, giving Pokemon with a higher speed stat more usefulness most of the time. But there are certain cases we see where Pokemon with a lower base stat total thrive competitively. And not just in PU and ZU where the power level drops considerably, they have seen play and usefulness in actual competitive formats, whether that be in VGC or higher Smogon tiers like OU and Ubers. In this video, we are going to look at some of these mons who managed to find use despite not being well equipped statistically. I'm going to define low base stat total by any Pokemon with a BST of 405 or under. I was originally going to stick to 400, but there are a few Pokemon right at 405 I think deserve to be mentioned. A majority of these Pokemon work because they have a unique set of skills that can carve them out a niche somewhere. And also keep in mind, I'm not talking about Little Cup Legends, Fear Pokemon, Mons that were used in OU like 1, 6 gens ago, or just light versions of evolutions like Girder, who have been decent in lower tiers, but would never actually be considered over their evolved forms. So don't be surprised to see those Pokemon excluded from this video. I'm going to start off with a Pokemon who helped inspire this video in Clefairy. With a pitifully low 323 base stat total, it could be hard to tell why this mon would be used. While it has a number of useful traits that help to become a solid support partner in doubles, even though its defenses are quite low, and its highest stat in HP only comes in at 70, this pre-evolution to Clefable can tank a surprising amount of hits with the combination of its great typing and the item Eviolite. Redirection is something that doesn't exist in singles, but in doubles it can be very important for taking moves meant to target a certain Pokemon and pulling them towards the other slot. Clefairy does this with the move Follow Me. It can choose other great support moves depending on the team structure. Along with Follow Me, the move Helping Hand is a popular choice to boost the power of its teammates moves. The great thing is these both have priority, so Clefairy's terrible 35 base speed isn't an issue here. Speaking of speed, the move Icy Wind is commonly ran as well, which does a little bit of damage to break sashes and sturdy while lowering both opponent's speed by one stage. Other support tools like Encore, After You, Life Do, and Heal Pulse can be run, while attacks like Knock Off and Moonblast are nice for removing items or doing decent damage with a chance to draw a special attack. These traits make Clefairy a great support Pokemon, but why use it over the fully evolved Clefable? It has access to these same support moves and can hit harder with its good special attack. The bulk with Eviolite isn't too much of a difference, and Clefable can use a different item like Leftovers for passive recovery. While the main difference is when Clefairy evolves into Clefable, its hidden ability Friend Guard turns into Unaware. Definitely better for Clefable in singles, but in VGC, Friend Guard is an amazing support ability. It reduces the damage allies take from attacks by 25%. This in itself makes Clefairy super useful, as you are giving extra bulk to every ally when active. Another detail I should mention is that item clause exists in doubles. This restricts you to one of each item, and with Clefairy holding Eviolite, you'll have more flexibility to put an item like Leftovers, Citrus Berry, or Rocky Helmet you'd see on Clefable onto a different mod. These types of unique characteristics led to Clefairy being a preferred choice in this format. Another Pokemon that's seen unique circumstances fall in its favor is Murkrow. Having a bit of a higher base stat total than Clefairy, Murkrow reaches the 405 threshold I set for myself, which is still pretty low considering it often sees more use than Pokemon with 1 to 200 more base stat points. Like Clefairy, this Pokemon's unique traits allow it to carve out a niche as a premier support option in doubles. It has considerably less offensive presence than its evolution, and as a support option, its defensive stats being this unimpressive bunch leaves much to be desired. But thanks to its Prankster ability, Murkrow is still able to work. With access to the amazing Prankster Tailwind combo, alongside other great support tools like Thunder Wave, Sunny Day, Haze, Quash, and Icy Wind, 
Murkrow is great at dictating speed control. Eviolate makes it bulky enough to take some hits, while it can also use moves like Feather Dance and Snarl to make itself and its allies bulkier by virtue of lowering its opponent's stats. Keep in mind that Murkrow actually has a pretty solid speed and respectable attacking stats, so even non-status moves have a good shot of going first. It can threaten big damage with Foul Play, which is based off the opponent's attacking stat, meaning you don't have to dip into your EV reserve to secure certain damage rolls. A strong move like Stab Brave Bird is powerful enough to take out what it would need to without investment. Being Dark type also makes it immune to opposing prankster moves, giving it some more utility, alongside being an Earthquake immunity and Psychic switch in. I'd also like to mention Sableye in the same conversation. With an even lower base stat total of just 380, this Pokemon fries off its amazing type combination alongside the prankster ability with great support moves. It carries different tools than Murkrow, so it really depends on what your team is looking for support-wise. With Fake Out, Encore, Will-O-Wisp, Gravity, and Disable over Murkrow, we see some enticing options you can cook with. It has better defensive stats, but lacks the ability to hold Eviolite. This does open it up to run items like Light Clay for dual screen sets, which makes the team bulkier as a whole. It can also use Foul Play for damage, set up pranks for weather, and just cause some shenanigans that disrupt the opponent's game plan. It can be used as support in many single tiers as well, notably Gen 5 Ubers. Definitely a good support option that offers something different than the previously mentioned Pokemon. As you can tell, most of these Pokemon thrive in doubles as support Pokemon, and we'll get into a few singles based Pokemon in a little, but I'm going to talk about the Pokemon who likely has the lowest base stat total to total usefulness ratio in all of Pokemon. You probably guessed it, but I'm talking about Smeargle. This Pokemon actually has had success in singles and doubles, as it has access to virtually every single move in the Pokemon universe. This is of course balanced out by having an abysmal 250 base stat total. The only decent stat this Pokemon has is its base 75 speed, which isn't even impressive by any means. Its bulk and offenses are garbage, and the normal typing is nothing special. Yet, having very few limitations to its move pool allows it to have a huge impact on metas throughout the generations. Common moves we see in both singles and doubles are Spore, Nuzzle, and Dark Void when it was usable. While Smeargle almost never leaves home without his Focus Sash to be able to do what it does. In singles it started as a Baton Pass chain staple when that trash was legal, passing stat boosts to his teammates. But later transitioned to a lead, utilizing its ability to sleep the opponent and set up entry hazards to give its team a massive advantage throughout the game. It could smash pass and ubers were giving any one of these offensive powerhouses speed and attack is deadly. And as the generations go on, and more strong moves are introduced, Smeargle just gets more tools. Now it can run Mortal Spin over Rapid Spin if it wants, to remove hazards while inflicting poison. Stone Axe and Ceaseless Edge help it bypass Magic Bounce and get a bit of chip damage while setting up hazards, and the variety of Protect variations it can use in either format gives it even more utility. In doubles its hidden ability Moody is legal as well, which is a wild card as you are gradually gaining stats, and a speed boost could give you an amazingly fast spore. It can redirect with follow me, provide fake out support, endeavor after its sash procs, wide guard, tailwind, honestly too many moves to mention. But generally you're going to see a few of the best status moves on most sets. It goes to show, even with terrible stats, if you got the moves, you can fill a role. One Pokemon who I wanted to mention is one who is absolutely terrible, even in the ZU tier. But this Pokemon was also banned to Ubers in Generations 3 and 4. Well, more so its ability was banned, and by proxy so was this Pokemon. Of course, I'm talking about Wobbuffet. At 405 BST, it hits my threshold for this video. Looking at its stats, the 190 HP stands out. This punching bag was designed to take a hit and dish it back. It is very predictable and easy to play around nowadays in singles, but in metas where its trapping ability Shadow Tag is legal, Wobbuffet ranges from niche pick to pretty good choice. The ability to trap opposing Pokemon, encore them into a move, and subsequently KO them with Counter or Mirror Coat gives Wobbuffet a role on teams that want to deal with problem Pokemon. This is typically a 1 for 1 mon, as Wobbuffet lacks recovery, and its low defenses mean it will take a lot of damage despite its high HP. 
I mean, that's kind of its gimmick. You lose a lot of HP to secure KOs. It can stop Pokemon like Geomancy Xerneas from sweeping, as a specially defensive variant can take a plus two Moonblast and KO in return. Custod Berry can be held for priority Destiny Bond to try to cheese a second KO. And Encore in general can be used to make your opponent's setup fodder. Wobbuffet is definitely an interesting mod with low base stats, but the fact that it at least had a place in a few generations uber tiers is impressive to say the least. Now this last one for the list could be considered a cop out, but I'm going to include Ditto here. At 288 BST, this Pokemon is rocking a 48 in every base stat. Ditto was downright terrible from its debut generation until generation 5 when it finally received a signature ability Imposter. Imposter pretty much lets Ditto skip the buffer turn it previously needed to use the move Transform, allowing it to copy the opposing Pokemon stats besides HP, any stat changes, and all moves with 5 PP in each. Ditto drops to the lowest tier in every generation, but it's a Pokemon whose usefulness is mirrored by the Pokemon it can copy. As primarily a revenge killer, Ditto more often than not equips a Choice Scarf to usually outspeed whoever it's copying and threaten them with their own moves. This is a huge deterrent to setup sweepers, as Ditto can reverse sweep if you aren't careful. It doesn't really matter the tier it's in, and Ditto is usually most popular at the beginning of a generation when people are running more offensive threats. Ditto generally doesn't want to copy passive Pokemon, unless it's to steal healing or take advantage of a defensive ability. It is limited by its reliance on Choice Scarf, making it a little predictable, but you always have to respect that it can revenge kill or reverse sweep if you aren't careful. So those are the notable Pokemon with low base stats who made an impact competitively. Do you think I forgot any? Leave a comment and let me know and tell me why they were good competitively. And if you liked this video, make sure you check out this one next. Take it easy buds.